London has been brought to a standstill by the addition of extra bike lanes and bus lanes. I'm standing here in the Marylebone Road, which is, it's actually the Euston Road, it runs onto the Marylebone. It's one of the main ring roads going through London. And you can see here that the traffic is backing up. They've reduced this road from three lanes to one. And look, there's a massive bike lane in the middle there. There's all those blue bollards there. I don't know what they're doing with that. And, you know, there's nobody in those lanes. All right, there's a few taxis coming down now. There's a, and this side here, look, double bus lanes, bike lanes. Um, and, and this has been brought through, I think, under emergency powers by, by the mayor or by the council. And it really is choking London. It's choking London's economy, London's commerce, and, and bringing everything to a standstill. I, I just don't understand it. I mean, how many bikes can you see in that bike lane? I can see one motorbike coming up now, and that, that's it. Um, and, and here you've got lanes, traffic being forced into one lane. If you go further up to the Euston underpass, it's chaos up there. I mean, it, 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 you've got all this traffic merging in from one side and into the, and coming up from the underpass. It's just chaos. It's, it's like this all day. This is not the rush hour. This is what's going on uh, now at uh, you know, midday. So it, it really is uh, bad and I think they've got to do that. And this is only one part of London. It's happening all over London as they bring in more of these uh, restrictions on roads. So I wanted to go on, just have a, a bit of a, sorry, a bit of a, a rant really, I guess, uh, to talk about this because I think uh, we're, we're a major city, London, and, and we can't just have a situation like this where you know, the whole city is just grinding to a halt. Uh, it's, it's, you know, people have already been deterred from coming in by 20 you know, congestion charges running almost you know, all day and all night uh, from 10, you know, to 10 o'clock at night, extra charges. It, it really is just, uh, it, it's, it's ridiculous. London theatres are suffering, London's restaurants, their, their business has gone down significantly since this congestion charge was extended and the prices have gone up. Uh, and you know, people feel nervous about using public transport anyway. But you used to be able to drive into London, you know, take your car in in the evening, uh, park up somewhere on a single yellow or a metre. You don't pay at night. Now they've got this bloody congestion charge. Uh, so it, it really, it's a, you know, People want to come out of a theatre and have a meal. They don't want to be going home and on the last train at night, you know, trying to get back to the suburbs. They need their cars. And for some reason, everybody's gone against cars. And yet we need cars. It's part of the economy. It's part of, you know, we manufacture cars here, for God's sake. So you can't just ban cars from all cities, ban cars from the roads, you know. Uh, it, it's just, I, I, I think it's bad for the economy. And, and, and we should see, particularly at a time when the, the theatres are suffering, the theatres are closing down left, right and centre, pubs and restaurants are closing down, and then they have this, it's like a, a double whammy, another nail in the coffin. Now, I don't, I don't know what's going on here, there's some camp being set up here against HS2. Stop HS2. I don't know what they're doing to stop HS2, but they're there anyway. Uh, you, you can see, I'm going to turn it around. Yeah, you can see here the eco warrior types. Basically, I don't know what these people do for a living. Have they got a job? There's one hanging out of a tree. I, I, do, I do wonder if these people actually work for a living. I don't know. There they are. In a, they've occupied a green in front of Euston Station. Police are not doing anything, as usual. Uh, just letting them, act, letting them just occupy that land. Uh, I, I, okay. It just seems like anybody can go out and stop Oxford Street, you know, block Oxford Street for three days, have a demo at the weekend, stop London from moving, stop shops from trading, and, and just kind of get away with it. I, where, where is the, the, the law and order? I, I just don't, I, I really don't understand it. I do despair of the way London has been run as a city and, and the way the police just stand back and take a softly, softly approach to, to, to demonstrations, to people occupying land. 
there, was, there were people occupying Parliament Square right opposite the Houses of Parliament for, for years before they were moved. I, 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 it's, just, it's just ridiculous. Anyway, that's, that's that. As I said, this week, uh, property prices have continued rising, all-time high. Share prices did dip yesterday and they dipped again today. Uh, are we going to have another crash? Well, some, some pundits think, think so. Uh, I've heard Warren Buffett's been selling shares. So and a lot of people are sitting on cash waiting for the market to move. And that, that's whether it's property or shares. So I, I think something's about to happen. I, I, I really don't see how the stock market and the property market can just you know, keep going up when the fundamentals are, are wrong. When the fundamentals are saying the economy is suffering, people are losing their jobs, more people are going to lose their jobs uh, when, when the furlough scheme comes to an end. And for, the, for those of you who don't know what that is, if you're watching this from abroad, we had a job furlough scheme or a job retention scheme where the government paid, well it was 80%, then it's 60% of their salary to keep people at home. And that was extended till October. But when that comes to an end, I don't think it's going to be extended again. Uh, and, and then I think we're going to see mass layoffs. And that's, that's when I think the stuff's going to hit the fan. So uh, that's why I can't understand why there's so many people going out and buying properties when you know, things don't look, look good. Uh, I know there's a stamp duty holiday. I know people have to live somewhere and people have to get on with their lives. They can't just wait forever. But <laughs> you've got to take a sensible view on this. You've got to take a view and say, you know, is it the right time to buy? Uh, if I was a first-time buyer, I'd be sitting and waiting a little while and seeing see how the land lies. Uh, because it, it's very difficult to pay a mortgage when you, you, you've lost your job. So you've got to be very careful. Anyway, that, that's, that's, uh, that's their, their situation. There's still obviously a lot of people with money and with savings, and many of these transactions might be on very small mortgages with a lot of cash coming in from parents or, or grandparents. We don't know. So, you know, good luck to them anyway, whatever happens. But I, I think a market correction or maybe even a crash is probably due in the stock market and the property market would follow next year. So, so there you go, that's my prediction. But you've got to take your own advice, your own financial advice. Don't just act on, on my word alone. So, so thanks for listening. Uh, I'm just now behind the, the British Library behind me there. Uh, uh, near into to King's Cross where I'm going to jump on a train. So, so thanks for listening. Have a great weekend and uh, bye for now.